Welcome back. Supervisor Harry Britt is my guest this morning, and a lot of people have said that he is even more liberal than the uh, former supervisor, Harvey Milk, and I'm not sure that you would agree with that estimation or not. Oh, I don't like words like that, Juana. Okay. Uh, I'm very committed to the things Harvey was committed to, and I'm learning so much so quickly that, that what I'm going to do on the board is still being decided by the contacts I'm having with people right now. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm sure that there are a lot of people who really don't know too much about Harry Britt. Uh, have you lived in the city for a long time? Have you been involved in politics? Yes, I am. have. I've been here for seven or eight years. Um, I'm from Texas, and I come from a family of Southerners. I was involved in the Civil Rights Movement back in the 60s. I was a Methodist minister for a major part of my life. I'm finding now, by the way, that being on the board is a lot like being a minister in the sense that you spend your time listening to people and finding out what their problems are and that politics really comes down to determining what people are interested in and helping them get those things. Now you are a proponent of gay rights and you yourself are gay, is that correct? Of course. Okay. Uh, I've been gay all my life as Harvey was and everything I do is a gay act but I'm a supervisor for District 5 and very little of what we do on the board has a gay angle to it uh -huh. and all of my time goes into being a good supervisor for the people of the city and very little into gay issues. Did your gayness at all conflict with your being a Methodist minister? Of course. Uh, the Methodist church that I was a part of could not accept my sexuality. They didn't know about it of course. Uh, I was not practicing gay sex at the time. I was married to a very wonderful woman. Uh, I did not come out until several several years after I left the church. Mm -hmm. my, my being on the board has done a lot of good for the church. The people that knew me have suddenly had to deal with the reality, and I think it's important that the church do that. Do you have some thoughts about uh, the slaying of Supervisor Milk? Um, I'm sure immediately after his shooting, you probably had some immediate thoughts, but since then, uh, have you been able to assess the situation? It's still very hard for me to go back and think about that day as it is for all of us. And I think, frankly, Harvey wouldn't want us to. Uh, the very basic concern of Harvey's right now would be that we go on and, and continue to fight for the things that he was fighting for. It was a terrible day for me personally, but it was also a day in which people who had loved Harvey came together and discovered a new kind of responsibility among ourselves. Harvey's gone, but all of us who cared about him and the things that he stood for realize now that it's our job. And that's exciting. We have a, a wonderful community of people, not just gay people, people all over the city who are committed to having decisions made by the people that are affected by those decisions. These people are coming together and doing some very exciting things. And, and I am honored. Uh, the trust that Harvey put in me was the greatest vote of confidence I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. And the chance to be a part of his work is, is what gives my life meaning right now. You know, it was really interesting because uh, Harvey was on my show talking about Proposition yes. 6. And um, at that time, I asked him if he felt that there was a conservative backlash that was behind Proposition 6. And he really laughed that off. He said that that was a, a prepackaged political thing that uh, conservatism was being thrown at, at the voters and at the public and that there was no conservative backlash. How do you feel about that? I think we always have to be on the guard against bigotry, whether it's against gay people or black people or Jews or women or whoever. However, I agree with Harvey. History is on the side of, of people coming to be more open, more accepting of each other. And we shouldn't put all of our, our energy into fighting the bad guys. If we will get out there and, and live our lives the way they should be lived and establish communication between human beings, the, the bigots will not be able to do their work. Mm -hmm. And that's what Harvey was doing, and that's what he would want all of us to be doing. How do you find politics on the board? I, a lot of people oh, have... Oh, uh, uh, I love it. <laughs> uh, you learn a lot. I, I'm glad to be here and have a chance to, to tell the people some of the things I'm learning. Uh, one of the things you learn, if I can do this, is that you get out of government. Uh, you get attention from government when you, when you get out there and politicize yourself and make known what you care about. A, a real good example, we spend a lot of time talking about condominium conversions on the board. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a huge amount of pressure on a supervisor to respond to the people who are building the condominiums. And historically, they've gotten built and they've gotten board approval. 
What's happening now is particularly a lot of senior citizens are getting together and are saying, we're afraid, we don't like these things, we want to take care of our housing needs first and then build the condominiums. This pressure is being felt, and I find that exciting, and I'm part of it. And Are you pro-condominium or against what condominium? What I am pro is making absolutely sure that we make it possible for people to live in this city who don't have a lot of money. You know, there's been a lot of animosity against gay people. Not too long ago, uh, a group of black leaders came out and said, we want gays out of the Western edition because they are coming in, buying our homes, raising the rents, uh, and forcing us out. And you see the Castro Valley area the same way. What would you say about that? I, I, I say that, that you get a whole wrong picture if you think there's a lot of animosity between gays and blacks. I've been working with black people most of my adult life around their issues and around gay issues, and more importantly, around housing issues. Mm -hmm. uh, on a proposition you, gays were in the very front of that fight. Uh, the gay people that I work with politically and that Harvey worked politically have been fighting for low-cost housing, have been fighting for improving the living conditions in the Western Edition and elsewhere. So you don't see speculation being led by a gay contingency? Of course not. Speculation is led, has historically been led by the big banks, the big real estate interests. A very tiny percentage of that is gay people. Gay people are affected by housing problems as much as anyone else in this city. And I, uh, you know, don't be misled by the press on this. There are important, there's important work going on now. And the interests of the black community and the gay community is exactly the same. Neither of our communities is gonna control this city. Mm -hmm. But this city can be controlled by coalitions of minority groups, seniors, poor people, women, Latinos, blacks, gays, if we all get together and work for the things we have in common, mm -hmm. this is our town. You know, it's interesting that you should mention coalition politics because that was one of the last things that Harvey mentioned to me uh, after our show was that he was trying to build coalition politics. Do you see yourself doing that? I was working with Harvey very closely on that. It's, it's probably the biggest commitment I have. San Francisco is either going to belong to the people who live here or it's gonna be governed by somebody else. Now, those people who come into our city every day and work here and then go home are not bad people. We can't survive without a good business climate in this city. But the decisions about what happens to San Francisco must be made by the people who live here. So you're for coalition I politics. I am very committed to the idea that all of the people of San Francisco, with all of their differences, must come together and work as a group. I want there to be a strong black political community in this town. Okay. I want the seniors to be strong. I want the gays to be strong. And I want all of us to work together around the things that we have to fight for together. Okay, we have just a few moments <laughs> left, and so I wanted to ask you about growth in a different light. There has been a projection that by 1990, we will have 35 new high-rises in San Francisco. Not if I can help it. Okay, that's what, <laughs> that's what I wanted to I've find out. I've seen some of these statistics. It's incredible what's gonna happen to our streets, and, and, and that's what I mean. The decisions about what happens to downtown have to be made by the people who live here. Uh -huh. and. One Do you thing think that's that, really possible? Do you think I people know can take the possible, power Juana. against downtown business It's happening. Interests? It's our city. We're the only ones that vote. We have strong neighborhood associations. But you have big financial backers that are backing the mayor. That are backing a number of the supervisors who take these mm -hmm. votes. The, those people are going to have to come before our board. We are accountable to our people. If we as a city simply say, these are the rules, those people are going to have to abide by them. And they're going to have to come up with proposals that take into consideration what we want. The most exciting thing about being on the board is that I do believe that this wonderful, wonderful city has a great future. If the people of San Francisco will say, it's our city, we make the rules, we create a good business climate, but you come to us before you create any of these more monstrosities of buildings that are that are destroying life, the quality of life for all of us. Okay, you know, we're almost out of time, but <laughs> if people want to come to you, are you available to them? My number is 558-2145. Uh, it's important that people call their supervisor. Okay. And, and let us know what you want. If we're not responsive, kick us out. Okay, great. Keep that in mind. Kick <laughs> him out if he doesn't do what you want. <laughs> Thanks for being with us this morning, and do be back with us tomorrow, because I'll have Don Haranzi on my show. It's a good man.